Hello and welcome to another, this is, you haven't heard this before, this is CEF Tech Talking Podcast. <laughs> and we've got here, and the reason we haven't heard it before is it's Mark Cole's first one. So you've got me and you've got Dave again. Yeah. And then we are joined with the one and only Mark Coles, who many have seen in, on in, video. On video, you're nationally famous for your appearance <laughs> on video and the lovely reception we give you at Tech Talks. But to have you in person was a joy today, Mark. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. It was a, it was a pressure. Sorry, pleasure. It was a pleasure. So, uh, what is what is your actual title at the IET? What do you do? So, my title: I'm head of technical regulations at the IET. So, what I do is I put the, t- the people together, the teams together, to enable BS seven six seven one, enable the committees that feed into BS seven six seven one, make sure that we have the right people at the right points to agree the technical content and feed that into BS seven six seven one, and ultimately push towards publication. So the, the regs book is a big bit of what you do at the IET. That's a big, big part of what you and the, the, the team, as you call it. We've met many of them. They've come around and joined us here at Tech Talks as well. And, uh, and is it that that's the only job they do or are they doing other things? Um, each member of my team is, is a, is a recognised technical expert in their own right and they're appointed to represent the UK on international committees and in European committees and this all feeds into global standardisation which ultimately filters down and feeds into BS7671 so we're all involved globally setting world standards for essentially protection against electric shock. So it goes the other way we sometimes go up and represent the UK on the more global committees do we? That's right that's right because we need we need to ensure that we have the 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 British perspective because, for instance, we'll never achieve global standardisation because the US has different socket outlets for plugs and sockets, receptacles. Uh, They have different voltages, different frequencies, so we'll never align on uh, at that level, but we will align on, you know, thou shalt not cause fires, thou shalt not uh, electrocute anyone. So from there, global standards are set. Then those global standards feed into the regions like North America, like Australasia, like Europe, for us, it comes into Europe, that's that, that global standard. And then it's tweaked for what happens in Europe because we have commonality with BSENs. Yeah, yeah. So we have, a, we have a system that's based on ESENs, protection against electric shock, and therefore when that standard in Europe is then brought into the UK, we'll need to tweak it because we have pen conductors in the distribution. So we do here, yeah, don't we, yeah. So we have problems there. So therefore, that needs to be recognised that we can tweak those standards to enable our customs and practices and also legislation. Ah, so so, so you, each of my guys is involved in that. Right, so yes. your, your guys go up and represent at the UK all these... A little bit like Eurovision, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Different shoes. <laughs> Slightly more glamorous. Uh, so the, the thing that I think a lot of people can't get their head around is the idea of these committees that sit in darkened rooms and ponder over the big <laughs> issues how does that actually work i mean do they literally just sit and discuss it till they can't discuss it anymore and then come to a conclusion well, nationally so with a national committee for example which is jpl 64 that's right. the committee that's, that's responsible. the one that pulls it all together pulls all but there are the, four subcommittees there are four there? subcommittees currently and an odd working group or a project team will pop up to deal with a particular and topic. who are those people why are those people there well those people have been appointed by by an industry body an industry body ha- that has a an interest in what's going on within jpl 64 and what goes on in bs 7671 an example being an example what, a manufacturer would be be manufacturer Beamer. Beamer. Yeah, Beamer. Beamer could Beamer, be yeah, yeah. They, they, now they represent a lot of the manufacturers of low voltage switch gear and consume units on bits and bobs throughout europe they do and they've got a big heavy body here in the uk and i know they are on most of the panels are they no? they are yes yes yeah so it's not about individual companies it's about the trade body or the association that represents that type of organisation. So you'll have representation from scheme providers, yeah. uh, HSE, uh, British Standards, um, London Fire Brigade, were London there, Fire Brigade yeah, have been involved from time to time. So it is a cross section, and, and, and part of my job, uh, it's a piece of work that's about uh, ready for renewal, really. But about five years ago, we looked at the, the, the makeup of, 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 the, of the standards committee to make sure there wasn't too many of those representing d- domestic installers, for instance, there needs to be more from yeah. larger installations. Yeah. We looked at it from that point of view and we looked at any gaps that, that we felt were necessary and we looked to plug those gaps with expertise. So it sounds to me like that's a recipe for s- quite a bit of compromise because there'll be so many different forces pulling backwards and forwards. So how, how is a conclusion reached by and large? Well, it, it is all about consensus. So the, the, there's, in each of these committees, there's a chairperson that leads the committee. There's a set agenda put together by the committee manager. But documents are coming in from from IEC, from from Senelec in Europe, 
with the, the HDs, the harmonised documents, they're coming in all the time because standardisation rolls on and on and on. It never stops. Mm. So these documents are forever coming in. And then a, a meeting's in the calendar. We make sure the right people... For instance, if it's a document on caravan sites, we'll make sure that the, the caravan experts and the installation experts and those that deal with external influences are available for the meeting. So it's about that level of person. And then general people as well, because everybody's got a, a, everybody should have an input. And then uh, people, uh, as I'm getting towards it, people who are long in the tooth, they have experience from 1988. When we last discussed this and we agreed <laughs> that, and, and how, how important that is yes. when you get young whippersnappers coming along. Who, who say, yeah, let's do it like yeah, this. No, hang let's on. change it just Back for change. In 1986, sake. it was done like this for a reason, and yeah. this is the reason. So that, that yeah. knowledge and expertise is. You can't be lost. He's you don't want to lose stuff indeed, like that, do you? Yeah. Now, also at the IT, we know, we've been talking about them at Tech Talks, the code of practice that you've got. Now, this has been something, that's probably in the last seven, eight years, you've done an awful lot of publications, haven't you, the IET? Not just BS 7671, but we talk about the code of practice for electric vehicle charging, mm. but you've got lots more, haven't you? And they are very good. Oh, they're great. Really helpful documents. The original code of practice was the, the in-service inspection testing of electrical equipment, which people refer to as pack testing. testing. Yeah. Yes, but we don't say that. We don't say that. <laughs> we didn't say um, that. And that was the original one. Uh, but from there, it's, it's, it's very clear that on the periphery of BS7671, there is a, a lust and a need for knowledge there and is. a requirement for knowledge on those yeah. areas. And where these opportunities arise, the IT will put a committee together of experts from an exp- and, and, and representatives of that particular that that industry, yeah. on the, again on the periphery of 7671. So you take, for instance, code of practice for uh, electric vehicle charging installations. It was representatives of the motor industry, uh, yes, obviously scheme saw, providers, yeah. HSE, r- the regular people we'd normally see, yeah. but then others who are involved in that industry and pull them together. It that gives it the slant. So yeah, again, so it basically it takes the EV one looks at 722 and fills in a lot of the gaps that could be left, doesn't it? So, I mean, we've spoken about this for a well, it's, uh, Yeah, it's practical implementation, isn't it? I mean, 722 is a, is a, a framework, and, uh, but it doesn't take into account a lot of things that you need to consider when you're putting in an installation. For example, when, uh, if you're installing an on-street charging point or points, you'll need to put in a road management system. You yes. need to apply for permission to dig yeah, the roads yeah, up. And yeah, what to, yeah. So it's, it's, what to expect it's, when you it's, see in the road and it, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, Traffic management yeah. with the... with the. Um, it's good, yeah, yeah. You know, the controls. So it, it isn't just sticking a cable in from here to there to make <laughs> no. that work. There's all manner of stuff goes mm. on behind it. Well, I know we, we base our, our a lot of the, the content that we do at Tech Talks with the code of practice, especially the battery storage one. When I started to look at that, that was so in-depth and... Really, without something like that, that a document, you just you're guessing really, and mm. and you can't guess at these things. You get them wrong; they really do go wrong big time. So yeah, the, the, I found them very very interesting. And you guys, they're available, aren't they? You can you can get hold of them as memberships as well, isn't there? So you can get if you're a member, you can get access to them, but at preferential rates, I believe, on your library. Well, as an IT member, you get twenty five percent discount on a single copy of right. publication ah, okay that's how it works but of course beyond the physical publications the documents the the books are available on the online platform their vital source yeah online platform that's the vital. Yeah, and the from online. there you can buy um a subscription for you know bronze which is three essential books and silver's a bit bigger silver and then platinum, etc yeah. you know so depending on the size of your operation you'll you probably you'll, want one or, yeah. one or the other yeah now memberships then so you can become a member of the IT but there's many different ways of doing it is there not you could be uh, what does it take to yeah, become a member a and, and who would consider it and why should they do that becoming an IT member you're demonstrating that you have um, a, a, a clear want to develop yourself and that's what it's all about it's about development it's about yeah. getting the most from the industry but also putting something back but of course we all always come around to the, the term competency crops up in absolutely everything. Yeah. And this is a demonstration of competency to a particular level. And then, of course, becoming an IT member, you're demonstrating to future employers, perhaps, mm-hmm. to your colleagues, that I'm one step above them because I really have, I'm investing in my future and I'm looking to develop. Now, from there, a person, once they become an IT member, they can look to become professionally registered at Eng Tech. This is the bit I was getting I to. Yeah, yeah. 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 So again, they're different levels, aren't they? So you can start 
you can start with that eng tech, I believe, is entry level, and then from there. But, but so this isn't above for everyone. It's just sparky. As an example, sparks. typically, what would somebody be to go to an eng tech? How would they achieve that? Well, th- th- there's an application process, but but, one, but, but um, on the IT's website there is a, um, um, a, a platform called Career Manager. So beyond your details, he's put in the experience you've got from industry. Okay. You'll also in- the IT will appoint. Uh, uh, a mentor to help you through this, and an assessment person to guide you through. You know, because often these documents, they're quite, they're, they're, they're in, in their descriptors and the guidance for them, they're quite wordy. So the, 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 the IT pointy person will guide you through them. What this means is you need to describe in a way that demonstrate that you've met particular competencies. Have you run jobs? Have you got experience in these areas? And, and you know, often in these area, these situations, you might say, for instance, "Well, I've no experience of that, yeah. but I've done this instead, and I think I could really." I, 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 I really like the process because it's not just based on the qualifications. It will look at your CV and take into account all that experience you've got over the years of working in the industry, and it will map that for you across them competency levels. And then you can go, as I said, the entry level, which, I'll, having looked at it. Nearly every spark should be going for that one if they want to. It's, it's. I think are you, are you even advertise the fact that it's a quite a quick entry route for that level. I think something like four weeks if you've got the, all the paperwork done. Four weeks and you get a, a reply back, and then you can go for the next one, the one above the I engine, then the C engine after that one. And you're right, it is about investing in yourself, mm. and that's what the IT help you do. Because then you get access to all the resources at Savoy House. Fabulous library, you can use indeed, that. Indeed, yeah. indeed, yes. You know, if you, for instance, hold meetings at the Void Place, mm-hmm. uh, that's one of the perks of, 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 of benefits. But it, it is all about, it's about individual competency, about demonstrating that you are on a clear path. You demonstrate to everybody that I'm head of potentials above everybody else because I'm heading in this direction. And is the IET's ambition that, that more would go down that route, try and progress themselves through that route? It, it, it is, uh, without doubt, because the IT believes that development of oneself is the way forward, mm. because it's, it is, it's individual comments, it's about growing. And if we, if we can get everybody to upskill, then we should have better installations, shouldn't we, really? Clearly, yeah, <laughs> if, we, if we just get yeah. one done, I mean, look what we're doing, we're going around trying to give everybody the updates on, on what's happening in partnership with you guys, by the way, and it's gone down extremely well. And the, the feedback's been brilliant from some of these, especially your guys and having the input there, which gives the total understanding on why the changes have happened. Well, I think the surprise has been for some people that you are real electricians, you're people who've been out there and done the job, you know what you're talking about, you're not just theoreticians that sit in a, an ivory tower. Yes. No, we're all we're all from an installation background certainly mm. and, and you know manage jobs and teams and and an academic route and then into standardization so mm. yes we do have we do have knowledge of the problems but I, I, as time goes on of course we fight we further remove from what's going on in site but however we do go through training structures to to keep us abreast of well also coming to things like this yeah. meeting the guys and, and just exposing yourself to those questions, you're, it's bound to bring you back down to earth to well, a certain extent. We, we had Michael, didn't we, with us at Nottingham, yes. and he said it was great to meet people, and actually someone said, I read your article, so to have the ability to actually see people, they <laughs> do exist, and likewise, readers exist, but like, so do the authors, so it's getting that connection with you guys to say you're not just a, a, a placeholder or a name yeah. on, the, on, the, on the top of a business card, but you actually a real-life touchy-feely person, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you can actually come to these events and come, come to the events and poke the IET. Because we do, <laughs> people do comment about the fact that regs come out far too often and it's just another expense. <laughs> and we, you, you, so you do have to justify that to a certain extent because it's yeah. an ongoing process, as you said. Because all, all st- every British standard has to be reviewed at least every five years. Now then, because of our involvement with Senelec and we uh, in Base 7671 adopts harmonised documents, once those harmonised documents are published, you have three years to implement them oh. and remove any conflicting standards ah, okay. so that's why there is a there is a regular pattern so it's not your fault <laughs> <laughs> we always blame him don't we we always say it's him it's his fault it's definitely him but we now know there is a system in place it's not just us thinking oh it's about time we put another one out there Mark has a there fabulous a long-suffering face whenever you get questions we, we always point them to him don't we 
because he knows he can't say, yes, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> but look, thank you very much for supporting us in these tech talks. It's been brilliant up to now. The feedback's been fantastic. The fact that the IT are here, you can come and talk to them. You can ask them questions that you really need the answers for. And also them code of practice that we keep referring to, Dave. They're mm. just fantastic documents, they aren't are they? They're great documents. Yeah. And you can get access to them again, either with us mm. over at CEF or you can go to the IT themselves and you get access to them there. But uh, from me, from Mark and from Dave, thank you very much for listening to this another fabulous podcast called CF Tech Talking. <laughs>